He is a specialist in this new standard that they're going to be in, uh, enacting or adopting in Gen is it January 2014 or academic year 2014? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, he, he has been one of the leaders in terms of the training that's going on now for the other instructors. And he is also a proud Democrat. Let's have him here for that. And finally, at some point in time, a long time ago, he was a student of our very own Richard Gunther. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Late 70s. Yeah, that's why I'm sure. It's always good to be here with, with my fellow Democrats here in Naval Valley. And as was mentioned, is I teach eighth grade science, and I am a Common Core Science Specialist. And to prove it, I want to show you my long, uh, the long form of my certification for all the Donald Trumps out in the world. And the, re the reason, yeah, the reason, and the reason why we need Common Core is for that very reason. When you have half the country who, despite the fact that you show a verse, uh, authentic birth certificate, still believe that the president of the United States was born in Kenya, and believe people like Donald Trump shows why we need Common Core. So what I'm really just trying to stress here is. What is Common Core? Why we need it? And I'm going to do that by focusing more within science then. And also, why there's all of a sudden some pushback against Common Core. Oh, I have my yeah. own theory about that. But basically, the current model of education isn't working. No child left behind. You can talk to any teacher. It pretty much destroyed education because it destroyed kids' natural inquisitiveness and it just been will and kill on agency tests. And the Common Core shifts because what it does, it puts a different way of teaching, but it puts more, a lot of the learning onto the students. It taps into their natural inquisitiveness, which means that they have to do some learning on their own, they do hands-on, they cooperatively learn with other students. That's all what's destroyed under No Child Left Behind, because it's been very individualized in Common Core. I mean, very individualized and standardized testing. And I'll give examples of that in my teaching experience. Now, I'll sum up in terms of science <coughs> Common Core. And this is, this is the goal. One sentence right here, I'll actually quote it. This is the Common Core Science Framework for K-12 Education. Here's the goal. And I don't see how anybody could be against this. Here it is. Could you use a microphone? You need a microphone? Here, I sort of like, don't hide it, but I can, I can use a microphone, and that, that's fine. Is I don't have a big mouth sometimes in my classroom. But <laughs> is, here's the goal of Science Common Core. is for all high school graduates to have sufficient knowledge of science and engineering to engage in public discussions on science-related issues. To be careful, second part, to be careful consumers of scientific and technical information and to be prepared to pursue further study of science and engineering if that becomes an educational and as you know, nowadays with discussions about genetically modified foods, climate change, when we have people who are on conservative radio who dropped out in the freshman year of college saying there's no such thing, <laughs> and I think you know who I'm talking about, the couple of gentlemen I'm speaking of, is, and people believe that, we need people actually to look at this information and to engage in these type of policy issues and now regurgitate what they hear on Fox TV or on conservative radio. That they can actually look and have intelligent conversations, whether it's here in the local area in terms of fracking, climate change, a lot of policy issues. And we don't have enough science and technology people right now. We're actually with the whole idea between the dreamers is the people we need in this country. 
because we don't have enough people engaging into engineering and science profession to solve these numerous issues that we have in this country. So this is the overarching goal of Common Core. And even if we have students who aren't going to become scientists or aren't going to become engineers, we need to have them in a functional democracy. We need intelligent citizens <laughs> who can sit there and rationally discuss these issues. Because it really scares me when half the people in the United States believe people like Donald Trump, that our own president of the United States, is not a citizen. These are the people who vote. And especially issues now when it comes to chemical weaponry. These are high level issues that people need to think. And what's frustrating is us as teachers is it used to be years ago is when that door closed, I know my students' needs, I know what I have to teach, I'm a professional, I'm going to give them the tools they need to be successful. But ever since No Child of Behind passed, it's been very scripted towards standardized testing. And a whole industry is involved in that now. Mm -hmm. And you hear a lot of pushbacks for teachers who are against standardized testing because that is used as a tool to evaluate us. Right. I can't be based on a kid has a bad day on that when he takes a state test and just goes A, B, C, D because it's A, C, D, C because it's his favorite rock band and the fight his parent. How am I engaged in that? And the new testing that is now starting next year is no more A, B, C, D or testing. The kids actually do have to do a constructive response. They have to actually write. I heard about uh -oh. that on the radio today. Yeah, the, the California State Legislature passed, it's called the STAR testing that they do now, is they, they voted to eliminate it. So now the kids actually have to write. A great example that I saw how Common Core was used was with the English department. They used Martin Luther Green's and the kids had to go in a circle and they had to actually read it. What do you think he meant? Before they read the speech, they had to do some research on the background of um, Martin Luther. And then they had to analyze this. What do you think he means? How does that apply today? How does it apply to me? And it, it, you see the kids engaged in this. And as a science teacher, it, years ago when I used to do labs, Kids loved it. They would engage, they loved working lab equipment, they would ask me questions, they were totally engaged. The last two, three years, I actually had to stop doing lab because it became so frustrating because the kids did not know how to interact with each other. Ah. Everything was a tool and a toy. They, they, were, they weren't even interested. It, and it took me two years to figure out how we wanted to dump them in last year. These are the kids who are brought up under No Child Left Behind. Oh, yeah. They don't know how to work in groups because it's all been tailored, you know, putting pressure on them, you better do good on this year's standardized test. And the reason why I believe there's been some pushback, they had a forum here in Canelo, Canelo Valley by mm -hmm. Common Core. Mm -hmm. There were some false statements made there. Yeah. One of them is not really mandated. Education is local. States can volunteer to implement Common Core standards. So far, about 43 of 47 states have, including Kentucky and Texas. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> Not Texas. Uh -huh. Now, science teachers are going, my gosh, they're going to actually start teaching evolution in Kentucky and Texas? Wow, there's hope for America. Kentucky has a Democratic so, that was a false statement. But that's why we need to People can really look at that. Citizens can look at that and sit there waiting in here. That's not quite true. Because what I try to teach my students, and every teacher does, is to critically think. Don't, I tell them, don't even buy what I say. Check it out yourselves. Because it's amazing. People like to be lazy. Don't believe what they see. On, I go nuts when I listen to some of these talk radio shows. Because when I hear some of the, the blatantly false statements that they get away with, and I've contacted many people, one was about how LAUSD doesn't teach abstinence. So people who watch, or oh, I can't remember, not hands, 
the Nafusa guy doesn't know writing. Oh, oh, right. oh, right. He said that. He said, LAUSD does not teach accents. Well, yeah. it happened to be that year I was teaching seventh grade, and part of that I had to teach sex ed, and I had a big brochure that it was written for at you know, middle school level that had the LAUSD logo as an accident. So I mailed it to them. Of course, I never heard that, but how many millions, <laughs> how many millions of people not believe that? So we need common core. And I want to actually show you. I don't want your eyes to glaze over, but I'm going to actually show you the science standards. They were so well thought out. And it must have been done by scientists because it's extremely detailed. It makes sense. And what this does, it puts a lot of the emphasis, instead of me just sitting here and teachers just groaning on and watching the kids' eyes glaze over. <laughs> I mean, no wonder why kids are bored. And it's sad for me as an educator is before No Child Left Behind, I used to do this. Kids were engaged. They have, kids are naturally inquisitive. And lately, the kids that I had that over the years, they've lost that. Because they've been raised under that individual drill and kill. And these are the skills these kids need to be successful in our society. And the reason why I believe that there's pushback against this is the current system is great to use to show our schools are failing. It's great. Oh, you didn't, you didn't make your AYP goal that the government stands for you. You're a failing school. Therefore, we have to turn you into a charter and a private school. And the whole role of that is just for charter school operators to make money on your tax dollars. So they're using our kids. They don't care about education. If you actually look at scores in charter schools, they're not any better, they're worse. And you hear about all the scandals in charter schools going on now because it's all about making a profit. Not, not, not at our kids, not at our, our future expense. We need to support public education. Because every kid has a right to the opportunity for public education. And as a, as a functioning democracy, we need this. And it's really sad for me as an educator and a science educator to see all the great technological achievements are actually occurring overseas. It's, not only is the United States sliding, but, but countries like China, India, all these developing countries are rising. These, our students are competing against a global marketplace. And it breaks my heart as someone who was raised under the NASA, watching people go to the moon, that now our space program, we don't even have a space program. We've got to hitch rides on Russian rockets to go into low Earth orbit. We'll be due. I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to be honest, there's going to be some problems with it, and it's more with the implementation is getting computer systems, getting kids comfortable to take tests with computer systems. There's going to be some snags here. But I understand the trend. And for me, I'm excited about it. Because now I have hope. I have hope that I can actually teach real world science skills that my students need. And it's going to be a hard transitioning for the, like I teach middle school for the kids in the middle because they're used to being taught one way and have everything handed to them. And now it's twisted back that they have to do some work on their own and be responsible somewhat for their own learning. That's sort of a hard thing to test. Because it's easy to test ABCD tests and rig, the, and rig the game with the score show that every school is a failing school. <laughs> and it drives me nuts. Come to any public classroom and watch how teachers teach. They're dedicated professionals. And I will sit there and I'll stick my neck out to defend public education. Because of the people I work with. I worked in the private sector. I was a chemist in my former life. And I'll tell you, there are more dedicated professionals in public education than I've seen in the private sector. Right now, I will go to task and defend them. And defend our students' rights to have high quality public education and not be turned into different parts. So I, 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 I can go on all night. So I don't want to take from our other, our other speaker here. All right, we'll go ahead and take a seat there.